Hey folks, welcome back. Today it's again about my controller script called Retrospect. And I don't explain what it does here in detail because I did this already in the last video. So just rewatch my last video. It kind of records MIDI data in the background so you never lose a melody or chord progression. But I added some new features this time, right? So I want to explain you what it does. And the best way to explain this is actually to show you here a flow graph or a signal flow graph. So usually when you play something on your keyboard here, right? You play on your keyboard, random notes, and you have no idea what notes are in a certain scale, right? So you play some wrong notes probably or out of scale notes. And then you send this MIDI data into a controller script and this controller script then sends this to uh, Bitwig to the piano roll. And here you can record uh, the notes, right? And there are probably some wrong notes or out of scale notes, but that's not a big problem. You can just use the key filter of Bitwig Studio, right? So you can set up here some kind of scale, maybe D sharp minor, right? And then this device corrects all the wrong notes or out of scale notes to the right notes that are in a certain scale. And then it sends these notes to an instrument. In this case here, it's the polymer synthesizer. You can use a VST instrument or whatever you want to use. It doesn't matter. And then you play the right scale notes with this instrument. Not a big problem. The problem is um, that when you hit record, you record basically what you play on the keyboard. And what you play on the keyboard is probably out of scale. So every time you hit play on your note clip, you play out of scale notes. And then these out of scale notes are corrected from the key filter on the fly and then are sent out to your instrument. So it's not a super big problem, but sometimes you want to have inside of the note clip the right notes. You want to record the right notes that are in the scale. So the workaround for this is in Bitwig, you just create another instrument track and then you route the output of the key filter into this new track and then you record all the right notes from the scale in this new clip. So it's a bit tedious and you need the key filter, you need another instrument track, right? And you need to record everything. So it's a bit tedious. So my idea was, why not get rid of this key filter here altogether and bring this functionality into the controller script. So you correct or have the functionality of the key filter inside of the controller script and then correct all the incoming notes from the MIDI keyboard before it hits the piano roll and before you record the notes. So you can record then the right notes that are in a scale into a note clip directly. And then when you hit play on this note clip, you play the right notes and send it out to your instrument, okay? So this is the genius galaxy brain idea, right? Um, and this kind of works, but um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, sh the result of this. Um, all you have to do is you select the scale, let's say major, D sharp major, and then you say key filter, yes, please. Okay. So if this is no, I can play, uh, uh, what's this D sharp major. Okay. I can play all the notes. No problem. And when I switch the key filter on, so now I can't play all the notes. I can hit certain keys here. This is here E. I'm playing basically this note. Right, so I switch this off. So I play E and when this is on, um, my script moves this input to F because F is in the scale of D sharp major. There are some problems here I already see it cuts out some notes when uh, when you play the same note as it wants to move the wrong key to the right key ah, okay already found a bug I need to fix this um, so let's hit record here um, right so I'm playing basically wrong notes on the keyboard but here I'm having 
the right keys for D sharp uh, major. Let's go to um, Exelodium flat six, maybe. So you can see we have a lot of different scales in here. It's not just um, does the key filter have um, major, minor, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydia, and so on. So only the popular ones, right? So with my script, you have endless different scales here. So let's hit record here. Yeah, so you can record here uh, basically different scales directly into the piano roll. It's not a big problem. So this is the idea behind it and it kind of works neatly. Um, the only problem I just uh, discovered is that when you play a certain note, and then you play another note, and the script wants to move this note to the first note, it kind of cuts off. Yeah, but it's also not a big problem. probably have to use here to steal the same key. Yeah, then it kind of works neatly. Um, so yeah, maybe I implement a fix for this, but you can also just disable this here. And it also works with uh, just normal VST. It's piano attack. Let's use this one. Let's use a different mode here. Uh, Hungarian minor, I have no idea. Oh, that's something. Oh, it wants to play the A there, okay. I'm actually playing G sharp here. Nice. So in my opinion, it's a bit better than the diatonic transposer uh, because you have more modes and we can also extend this here by a lot of different more modes, but I think it's already pretty dope that you have so many. Um, and then you can directly record this to a note clip without actually um, having to create a different instrument track and then record the output of the diatronic transposer and so on. It's, it's super tedious. So um, that's now in the script here. I put this uh, update in the description below. Um, I recommend to download actually my zip file. A lot of people have problems uh, with downloading JavaScript files directly. Um, so just download the zip file, put it into your controller script folder, and you can find this under locations my controller scripts and there's here a directory. So put this please in this directory. This is the right one. And in here, you can maybe create a subdirectory called maybe polarity and then you unzip my file into this directory. Then you can go to uh, controllers here and let's disable this here for a moment. You go to add controller, you select your polarity and then you say retrospect and then hit add. Then you need to select your MIDI input, which is probably your controller. And then it goes live, it's on. And then you have here this kind of icon in the top right. I said, sadly can't change here the icon. Maybe they change this in the future that you can uh, use you know, your own customized icons, but at the moment it's just the same icon. Um, and then you have this here and you can select everything, right? Um, it also saves all these settings here with the project. So when you dial in here, Hungarian minor, D sharp, and then you save the project and you open up the project, it's, you have the same selection here. So it's saved also or persisted with the project, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, if you have some problems or if you run into problems, let me know in the comments down below or maybe join my Discord, ask me questions. Um, if you have some feature requests, also let me know. I'm open for everything. I just have not enough time, basically, uh, sometimes. But 
I try to uh, implement the best ideas, of course. Um, subscribe to the channel or maybe subscribe to my Patreon. I still have a Patreon. Want to support me, okay? Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video and have some fun with this. Bye.